ठाकुर की जय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवास आदि गौर भक्त वृंद की जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गिरि गोवर्धन की जय व्रजभूमि वृंदावन धाम की जय नवद्वीप मायापुर धाम की जय पुरुषोत्तम क्षेत्र जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की जय गंगा मैया यमुना मैया की जय भक्ति देवी तुलसी महारानी की जय श्याम वेद गौर भक्त वृंद की जय पति तपावन हरिनाम संकीर्तन की जय श्री श्री रुक्मिणी द्वारकाधीश की जय श्री श्री रुक्मिणी द्वारकानाथ की जय श्री श्री जगन्नाथ बलदेव सुभद्रा महारानी की जय श्री श्री गौरताय की जय शील प्रभुपाद की जय शील प्रभुपाद ट्रांसडेंटल बुक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन की जय निताय गौर प्रेमानंदे ऑल ग्लोरीज टू असेंबल डिओटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू असेंबल डिओटीज All glories to assemble devotees all glories all glories all glories to shri guru and shri gauranga om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जाया मुदीर नष्टेशु अभद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवतीम श्लोक भक्तिर्भवति नैष्टिकी कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय चंदगोपकुमराय गोविंदय नमो नम रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद्भागवत कैंटो थर्ड चैप्टर सिक्सटीन Jay and Vijay curse by the sages text 32 16 yeah text 32 dwastavadishya bhagavan vimana shreni bhushanam सर्वातिशया लक्ष्म्या जुष्टम स्वधिष्णमाशत द्वास्थावादिश्य भगवान् विमानश्रेणी भूषण सर्वातिशया लक्ष्म्या जुष्ट स्वं धिष्णमाशत द्वास्था स्वादिश्य भगवान् विमानश्रेणी भूषण सर्वातिशया लक्ष्म्या जुष्ट स्वं धिष्णमाशत
ದಶ್ವಾದ್ವಾದೀಶ ಭಗವಾನ್ ವಿಮಾನ ಶ್ರೇಣೀಭೂಷಣ ಸರ್ವಾತಿಶಯ ವಾಸ್ತವಾದಿಶ ಭಗವಾನ್ ವಿಮಾನ ಶ್ರೇಣಿ ಭೂಷಣ ಸರ್ವಾತಿಶಯ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಿಶ್ವಾದಿಶ ಭಗವಾನ್ ವಿಮಾನ ಶ್ರೇಣಿ ಭೂಷಣ ಸರ್ವಾತಿಶಯ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮ್ಯ ಜೂಷ್ಮ ಸ್ವಂ ಧೀಷ್ಣಮಿಷ ವೈಷ್ಣವಿ ದ್ವಾಸ್ವಾದಿಶ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಶ್ರೇಣಿಭೂಷಣ ಸರ್ವಾತಿಶಯ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮ್ಯ ದ್ವಾಸ್ಥು ಟು ದ ಡೋರ್ ಕೀಪರ್ಸ್ ಅದಿಶ್ಯ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದಮ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಪರ್ಸ್ನಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಹೆಡ್ ವಿಮಾನ ಶ್ರೇಣಿ ಭೂಷಣ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಡೆಕೋರೇಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಏರ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ಸ್ ಸರ್ವ ಅತಿಶಯ ಇನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ರಿಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸಿವ್ಲಿ ಆಪುಲಂಟ್ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮ್ಯ ಆಪುಲನ್ಸಸ್ ಜುಷ್ಟಂ ಬಿಡೆಕ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಸ್ವಂ ಹಿಸ್ ಓನ್ ಧಿಷ್ಣ್ಯಂ ಅಬೋಡ್ ಅವಿಷತ್ ವೆಂಟ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಬೈ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾ ಕಿ ಛಾ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ಡೋರ್ ಆಫ್ ವೈಕುಂಠ ದ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಟು ಹಿಸ್ ಅಬೋಡ್ ವೇರ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಮೆನಿ ಸೆಲೆಸ್ಟಿಯಲ್ ಏರ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಸರ್ಪಾಸಿಂಗ್ ವೆಲ್ತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಪ್ಲೆಂಡರ್ ಪರ್ಪಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಇನ್ಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟುಕ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ at the entrance of vaikuntha loka in other words the sages were not actually within vaikuntha loka but were at the gate it should it could be asked how could they return to the material world if they entered vaikuntha loka but factually they did not enter and therefore they returned there are many similar incidents where great yogis and brahmanas by dint of their yoga practice have gone from this material world to the vaikuntha loka but they were not meant to stay there they came back it is also confirmed here that the lord was surrounded by many vaikuntha airplanes vaikuntha loka is described here as having splendid opulence far surpassing the splendor of this material world all other living creatures including the demigods are born of brahma and brahma is born of lord vishnu krishna states in bhagavad gita in 10th chapter aham sarvasya prabhavah lord vishnu is the origin of all manifestations in the material world those who know that lord vishnu is the origin of everything who are conservant 
with the process of creation and who understand that Vishnu or Krishna is the most worshipable object of all living entities engage themselves in Vishnu worship as Vaishnavas. The Vedic hymns also confirm this Om Tad Vishnu Paramam Padam The goal of life is to understand Vishnu. The Bhagavatam also confirms this elsewhere. Foolish people not knowing that Vishnu is the supreme worshipable object create so many worshipable objects in this material world and therefore they fall down. We will also read text 33 and 34. Uh, they don't have purports but it's in the same connection. Tautu girvana rushabho dustarad bhuri lokataha Hatashriyo Brahma Pashad Adbhutam Vigatas Mayo. But those two gatekeepers, the best of the demigods, their beauty and luster diminished by the curse of Brahmanas, became morose and fell from Vaikuntha, the abode of Supreme Lord. Tada Vikuntha Dishanat Tayor Nipata Manayoho Hahakaro Mahanasid Dima then the Jaya and Vijaya fell from Lord's abode. A great roar of disappointment arose from all the demigods who were sitting in their splendid airplanes. Om Ajnanati Mirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Muno Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swa Padantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Utapadakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnamam Shcha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lilita Shri Vishakhan Vitamshcha Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashatya Deshatarine Vanchakal Paturubhishta Krupa Sindhu Bevacha Patitana Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesh Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namo Stute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Urshabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Masadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Mukham Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langa Yate Girim Yat Krupatam Aham Vande Shri Guru Dina Tarinam Paramananda Madhavam Shri Chaitanya Ishvaram Hare Krishna I seek blessings of all devotees so that I can speak something glorifying Lord for all of your pleasure and for my purification. So here uh, we are seeing, uh, we are coming to an end of a discussion between Lord Brahma and the demigods. You know, Lord Brahma was explaining what is the reason for the darkness in the universe. And then we saw how these four Kumaras had come and they were stopped by the gatekeepers, Jay and Vijay. And they were cursed because of that, you know, they became angry and they cursed. And then Lord Vishnu, he appeared there on the scene. He specified the four Kumaras and then he, uh, you know, asked now in this verse, you know, he's saying that Lord is asking Jay Vijay now to go down to material world, you know. Of course, he gives them uh, he gives them assurance that soon they will be a returning back. So, in today's verse, he is saying that after the speaking at the door of Vaikuntha, the Lord returned to his abode 
where there are many celestial airplanes and all surpassing wealth and splendid. So we'll s Prabhupada in the purport he is mentioning, emphasizing on two things. First, how uh, if one goes to Vaikuntha, he doesn't come back. And he's mentioning that this incident has took place at the gate. You know, they did not went inside. You know. And then the second thing, Prabhupada is mentioning about that how worshipping anything but Lord Vishnu will lead to one's fall down. So, we'll see these two points. So, also, you know, Brahmaji is explaining the beauty of Vaikuntha. Like here he is mentioning that there are many celestial aeroplanes all surpassing the wealth and splendor. So, what we see in this material world, you know, as Bhagavad Gita says, is just a reflection of original beauty. Uh, so the original beauty, it's in the spiritual world. So same way, original opulence is also in the spiritual world. Here, there is mention about airplanes. You know, for you know our airplanes to fly, it requires so much material arrangement, right? There has to be a control center, communication center, and then the runway, and the tarmac, and you know, so many things are required. But in spiritual world, and then there is a fuel, like you know, very costly fuel, which, and then the, when the aeroplane flies, it makes a rattling sound. We get air pressure, and uh, somebody gets nausea, you know, nausea also because there is a long flight, we are cramped. And all that comes out of aeroplane is thick smoke, which is full of pollution, right? And then that also it cannot go uh, all the way. And there are always, you know, announcement if the air cabin pressure drops down, oxygen mask will fall. <laughs> and if, you know, always see the emergency exit. So it's not basically, you know, safe and uh, peaceful in that sense. But the airplanes in the uh, in the spiritual world are they they are not like that. They are very pleasant. And they say that it's not the congested box, cylindrical box. You know, they are so beautiful that you know, you know it is said, you know, Sarvati Shashaya Lakshmya in every respect they are extensively opulent. So consider the, you know, this Air Force One, right? In which the President of United States travels. Many times on internet there are photos, right? So that is not even a garbage can compared to the celestial airplanes. They are so beautiful, you know. So, and then they don't need any fuel or runway. It just at will. The one who is sitting there, they just wish, I want to go there and it will just take you there. <laughs> no pollution, you know, no need of, you know, air pressure, uh, no need of, you know, oxygen mass, seat belts, nothing. You do whatever you like. That is the beauty of this uh, airplane. So material, uh, in material world, what we see, it's just a tiny, teeny fraction of what beauty and opulence is present in the Vaikuntha planet. You know. So, and then, you know, Prabhupada goes on to mention that, you know, this all thing has happened at the gate. So, Krishna says that, you know, yad gatva nivartante taddhamam paramam mama. Once someone reaches Vaikuntha planet, he will not come back. Krishna has promised, right? So, how this four Kumaras have come back? So Prabhupada is mentioning they actually did not enter Vaikuntha. They were still on the gate, you know. So and then, you know, here he is mentioning about the great uh, mystic yogis and brahmanas who tried to go there, but they came back. So the reference is that of a Samuni who had uh, offended Amrish Maharaj and therefore he had to come down you know, from Vaikuntha planet. 
it also kind of reiterates fact that if we do vaishnava aparad there is no way we can enter vaikuntha so the four kumaras they often did jay and vijay one says therefore they could not do and also to the extent that they were supposed to get dasya bhakti like you know the devotional service in mode of servitude but they just got you know the shantaras you know in the mode of uh, you know awe and reverence silent why again because they offended jay and vijay so uh, it's very like you know again and again is stress that you know yeah no vaishnava aparad goes unpunished whoever may commit it so that gives us kind of you know uh, we have to be you know kind of vigilant of our activities so that we don't take uh, vaishnavas granted and you know offend them the other part of purport chala prabhupad is mentioning is about how worshiping lord vishnu is the only worship that can give us real benefit and the other worshipable objects in this material world will lead to one's fall down so many times people worship some of the you know film stars or sports leaders you know messi 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 they are mad behind you know the footballer that person even doesn't know who these guys are you know he just knows that yeah, they are my fans but can he reciprocate no he just can do he can just maybe wave a hand at max you know that's all so this worshipable objects in this material world so neither they give any benefit there is just ego that is yes, you know i am fan of a particular soccer player or a you know fan of an actor or actress whoever so it doesn't give any tangible benefit for one who is admiring them and even those icons are temporary there was a pele and there were like you know other football players they're gone now you know the new boys may not even know you know the new kids so they are temporary they won't give any benefit third thing uh, is it's not satisfying that means because there is no reciprocation for some time one may get uh, some you know egoistic pleasure but it's not satisfying you know uh, okay so this is about the mortal beings what about demigods you know many times people do you know worship demigods so again like you know the demigods bhagavad gita krishna says that whatever the demigods give krishna sanctions and then only they give so they are just via medium so they may get some benefit material benefit for some time but again that is short lived and many a times because the worshipper doesn't know what to ask for they tend to ask you know wrong things and most of the time material things and then instead of that benefiting them it leads to further problem you know? like some uh, one of the demon you know he worshiped lord shiva and you know he pleased him he got a boon that whoever's hand you know he will put his hand on whoever said he'll be die you know immediately and uh, you know what happened that he you know this lord shiva gave the boon and then he tried to uh, you know uh, capture parvati by you know trying to putting hand on lord shiva himself but ultimately lord tricked him and he made his hand you know put on his own head and he was died so the benefit which he derived by worshiping it became the cause of his own death and like that you know many benefits we can see that the material benefits leads to ultimate you know problem you know like prahlad maharaj says the solution in this material world is more troublesome than the original problem itself you know so and if we see from the soul's perspective even if somebody say gets a heavenly body and enjoys material pleasure 
the problem is they are just prolonging their stay in this miserable material world which is again like you know birth old age disease death is always waiting so they are not hitting the real solution so propa is pointing here the real solution is worshiping lord vishnu you know so and then if we don't worship then naturally will fall down so many times uh, like say you know when we read uh, so we saw okay you know there's grades like you know worshiping mundane people worshiping demigods worshiping lord vishnu but when we come to devotional service and when we read you know say for example bhagavad gita you know 18.56 uh, you know, or 64 sarva dharman parityajya right was yeah so their prabhu in purport tried that one should not even worship lord vishnu but one should exclusively worship lord krishna so once we come to devotional service we come to know something there is more so how to understand that so there are two things one is called as tatva that is the principle and another is called as rasa or the melo okay. so principally all these incarnations lord vishnu you know lord ram narsimha vamana lord krishna they are all on the same level principally you know so you worship anyone they can take you uh, back to spiritual world you know we are you know we can break this cycle of birth and death by worshiping any one of them no problem but when it comes to rasa or melo there are gradations so uh to start with yes bhagavatam says that you know see it's the vedic vedic uh, literatures they are so all encompassing that for atheist people they say that okay you know you first become a theist you know you accept some authority and regulate whatever you are doing and then that's why the vedas you know they even allow like meat eating intoxication they allow but then there is certain regulation and then then there is certain authority given right uh that okay you do it only once in fortnight that too you have to follow a certain procedure you have to offer it to kali of course mother kali doesn't take it but you know just to make sure that they are uh, submitting to some authority and then from there you know you chant this mamsaha that i am he that means you know in this life i am cutting you next life you cut me so slowly by doing this they are elevating consciousness from becoming complete atheist to becoming like you know accepting some authority and then gradually giving them the opportunity to do whatever sense gratification they want but regulating that and elevating their consciousness to bring them to the mode of goodness wherein ultimately to bring them to the worship of lord vishnu so that is the whole vedic literature they do at but then the bhakti literatures they take us beyond so what we have received is that this you know post graduate study wherein yes you know worshiping lord vishnu yeah on the principal level it is same as worshiping lord krishna but then there is something more that there is the melo the different rasas you know so uh, in vaikuntha planets generally you won't see you know somebody sitting on lord vishnu's back and you know playing with him you know it's all mode of awe and reverence that's about most of the time and of course lakshmi is there uh, but she is also in mood of you know reverence you know worshiping lord vishnu so the other rasas are very like you know vatsali is almost not there you know but same thing if you go higher uh, see past time of lord ram past time of lord you know there is other rasas like there is kaushalya mata is there there is vatsalya ras is little bit there but there also you won't see hanuman jumping on lord ram's back you know? but if we go to goloka we'll see even monkeys they jump on krishna's back and krishna's friend they make him carry him mother yashoda ties krishna so all this relationship one can imagine all are present in full 
it was you know grander display in krishna's past time so shila prabhupad uh, when he writes like this in the purport like one should exclusively worship krishna not only you know lord vishnu he is not being fanatics but he is being fanatically focused on giving the highest form of melos to all the readers so uh, therefore uh, we have to be really grateful and uh, for our fortune that we are in this uh, gaudiya vaishnava sampradaya which even goes little beyond and we have lord chaitanya so it said bhagavad gita is word of god bhagavatam is act of god like his deeds past times and chaitanya charitamrita is his mind how lord thinks so we are even given access to that by mercy of shila prabhu so uh, therefore if we follow bhakti yoga then uh, we will be awarded the highest though we are not qualified so the other two points here comes is like you know in this word 33 and 34 is that when the when the curse of this brahmana took effect the beauty and luster of the gatekeepers got diminished so therefore it is said that when we offend someone even our opulence whatever we have small it gets diminished so if something is happening in our life you know better cross check hey did i offend somebody or is it from my you know last life's karma you know yeah so and we can see that vividly like when uh, haridas thakur was uh, offended by this you know uh, one of the brahmanas you know he said like you know haridas thakur was explaining the glories of holy name and he was objecting and he said if what you are saying is wrong your nose of you know nose will fall off so instead of something happening to haridas thakur this particular brahmana's nose got fall off immediately so diminishing in you know moros and you know like diminishing in his own beauty same way like you know when indra had offended brahaspati immediately he lost his opulence you know so therefore we have to be very careful and if uh, something wrong happening in our life good time to you know introspect did i offend someone you know? and also uh, the next verse 34 it says that when the jay and vijay fell from the lord's abode great roar of disappointment arose from all the demigods who were sitting in their splendid airplanes so they became very afraid because they know that now what's going to happen is we are all going to get into troubles uh vishwana chakravarti thakur he writes uh, in very uh, nice way the commentary to this verse is like in this this section here in he says that the demigods they ask that oh lord you know when will you save us you know and then the lord says, the lord brahma says that no sorry the demigods ask lord brahma when the lord will save us from this uh, you know demons now because they are coming everything has become dark just even before their arrival everything has become dark everything has become inauspicious so brahma ji says you know lord will save whenever you know he has to save you know meanwhile what you do is you perform you know your devotional service so so this is the effect so whenever in this world there are like you know earthquakes famine and you know all the inauspicious things happening we have to understand that some inauspicious creatures are getting born so what is the remedy to that doing hari naam sankirtan performing devotional service that is the only remedy which even brahma ji tells to the demigod and uh, when we perform devotional service you know there is a nice prayer in mukundamala stotra it says that nathena purushottame trijagatam ekadhipe chetasam seve swasya padasya datari pare narayane tishthati yam kinchit purushadhamam katipayam grame shalpaarthadam सेवाये मृगयामहे नरमहो मूढा वरा कावयम सो ही सेज दैट ओ रिचर्ड मैन यू नो यू आर एंगेज्ड इन सर्विंग द मास्टर ऑफ फ्यू विलेजेस हु आर नॉट इवन कैपेबल टू रिवार्ड योर सर्विस सो इंस्टेड ऑफ दैट 
why don't you worship your supreme father lord vishnu who is ready to give his own kingdom to you you know and since you know he is saying that you are not taking to this worship of lord vishnu you are mudha you are foolish wretched fellow so you know, he is kind of proding that you know so therefore please take the worship of lord vishnu so uh, to summarize we saw that how uh, in this verse there is beauty of vaikuntha loka is explained and then shila prabhupada is mentioning that nobody can go into vaikuntha unless they are pure devotees and then he is quote, even quoting that the whole incident took place at the gate of vaikuntha uh, and then he is even kind of referencing to durvasa muni how he went and came back because unless you you are pure devotee you cannot enter and once you enter you, you don't have to come back you know that he is recording and then the second part of purport shila prabhupada was focusing on why to worship lord vishnu and then we saw that how worshiping anything in the material world uh, doesn't give us satisfaction perfection and reward so we saw that you know worshiping uh, film stars sports stars you know we don't get anything but some egoistic pleasure worshiping demi gods we may get some material benefit but that's also uh, not ever lasting that's temporary and many times it's problematic and worshiping lord vishnu only can break us you know from this uh, cycle of birth and death and then there also we saw that how many times prabhupad he mentions that we should not even worship vishnu but we should exclusively worship krishna so we saw that that's not uh, lord worshiping vishnu and krishna is same on tatva level on the uh, on principle level but when it comes to the mellows when it comes to the rasa uh, lord krishna is you know rasa raj is full of mellows whereas lord vishnu is more of a awe and reverence you know of course prabhupad said that when we worship rukmini dwarakadeshwar you know radha vrindavan chandra whichever deities we have we should do it in mood of worshiping lord lakshmi narayan we should not go and you know sit on dwarakadeshwar's shoulder you know in the altar Uh, rather we should do it in mode of awe and reverence but at the same time understanding that krishna is the reservoir of all the mellows and he can award that and then we also saw that the gaudiya vaishnavism it goes even further by giving access to lord chaitanya's past time wherein lord's mind is revealed so when shila prabhupa then purports sometimes mentions about exclusively worshiping krishna it's not fanatism but it's fanatic focus to give us the best and then we saw that you know how the further verses it says that when the gate keepers fell down their luster and beauty everything got diminished so we saw that if you know uh, example of this you know brahmana offending haridas thakur that if we offend vaishnavas even that happens to us also and uh, how when this jay and vijay came down the demigod got disturbed there was all inauspiciousness darkness but then the cure which brahma ji was told us keep engaged in devotional service so uh, with this we would like to stop any questions comments yes bro you mentioned how in uh like in vaikuntha there's on veneration and uh krishna loka there's more like friendship different rasas and you gave the example of i think the cowher boys getting on krishna's back but you also mentioned the monkeys getting on krishna's back so is there a specific where is that stated exactly no actually okay uh, this this i was kind of trying to uh, uh compare wherein like you know say hanuman ji never sits on lord ram back but we see see in krishna's krishna's past time krishna feeding monkeys it's not exactly i have not read exactly wherein monkey jumped on krishna's back but it's like basically you know we see that he played with you know monkeys also right so uh, that was how i was trying to you know okay uh, picture you know you All can right. say Thank yeah you. any other questions or comment okay yes maharaj Uh, 
Uh, thank you for your comment. I just wanted to add something to it. <clears throat> I hope my understanding is correct. And if it's not, you're welcome to correct me. Uh, the, the major difference in worship of Lord Vishnu and the worship of Lord Krishna and all things connected with either of them is that Vishnu is much more sophisticated, he's much more cultured, he's much more refined, uh, he's like a prince, he's like a, a king, he's cultured. Krishna is less so, but that doesn't mean that he's a lout or he's a good for nothing. It, that's just the way he acts and there are people who like that he acts in a casual way, in an easygoing way, in a relatable way. These are the ways, just as for example, I'm talking to you and uh, we talk in a certain way which we understand each other. We say, ah, uh, and but, and mm, mm, like that, that. Those, those are what you call non-sophisticated expression. Mm, well, mm, yeah, uh, the, so, uh, but we understand one another and I feel that uh, we're in the same camp because I do them also. The, so the important point is that, uh, uh, that for the devotees who prefer, who need, who require casualness, easiness, um, not sophistication, uh, they feel uh, awkward, they feel uncomfortable, they feel disassociated when there's too much sophistication, com c culture, and of these things. But that doesn't make them lower. We shouldn't think like that. It's just the way they learn to speak, the way they will learn to act. And so, uh, therefore, whether you speak sophisticatedly or culturedly, or whether you speak in a very commonplace and ordinary manner, but in both cases, your only interest is loving Krishna, serving Krishna, glorifying Krishna, applauding Krishna, bowing down to Krishna, whether you do it in sophistication or you do it in casualness. The most important thing is that you love him and you wish that he gives you the love to love him even more and better. Perfect. Thank you, Maharaj. Grantara Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Chai Srila Prabhupada Ki Chai